Hello once again, it's everyone's favorite game. What can I come up with for a video idea on a Friday? This is gonna be a r slash place clone. Now, if you're not familiar with r slash place, it is a uh, activity that takes place on Reddit every once in a while, sometimes when they need good PR, where a bunch of users come together, they can place a pixel every couple of minutes, uh, and it causes them to create some really interesting designs. And right now they're currently revolting against their admin overlord. So a lot of it I can't really show because uh, it'll probably get my video demonetized. But uh, I thought it'd be fun to create a quick little clone like this. So you can see here in real time, I have two users that can place pixels and using action cable, the uh, things are being broadcast and the colors are being saved here. I can like zoom in a bit. We can change this to, I don't know, like green. And now you can see this user over here can, can use green or whatever. So I have the pixels being set a little bit bigger. It's not the most user friendly, but I figured for the sake of like a speed run, this would be interesting. So let's go ahead and let's create this real quick. To get started, I'm gonna control L. I'm going to, oops, I'm going to zoom in a bit and I'm going to hit F1 to start my timer and then we'll do a Rails new video and we'll go ahead and CD into it. So a couple things to note here. One of the things you're gonna be learning, uh, oops, I need to CD out of here and then do a Rails new video. Uh, a couple things that you'll be learning here. Uh, one, obviously action cable, but there's always this weird disconnect between action cable and stimulus. So one of the things I wanna cover here is how you can actually broadcast events from your stimulus or from your action cable uh, JavaScript to your stimulus controllers so that they can communicate without you having to uh, put like all of your action cable stuff into your stimulus controllers because we all like stimulus controllers but of course uh, you know there's some stuff there that you have to worry about okay so I have to open up my notes here real quick because uh, some of the stuff is a little bit complicated we'll do a bundle add for device and then we'll do a rails g device colon install command It'll give us user account creation, but now we have to do a Rails G device user to actually have user accounts. Cool. So we have those now. Next, let's go ahead and let's generate our pixels. We're gonna be storing these in the database, obviously. So we wanna do a Rails G model for some pixels. Uh, we wanna give each pixel a uh, X of type integer, a Y of type integer, a color of type string, and a user colon references, just like that. Uh, next, we have to generate our stimulus controller. So let's do Rails G stimulus, call it the pixels controller. And then we wanna do a Rails G channel for our action cable and we'll call it the pixels channel as well. Then let's do a Rails G controller pages home so we can have a home page to work with. Uh, we also have to do a Rails G controller pixels because we have our pixels model, we also need a pixels controller. And now let's go ahead and let's do a Rails S to start our server. I'll go over here and I'll refresh, tell me to run my migrations and we're good to go there. So let's come over to our routes file. In our routes file, what we wanna do is first of all, let's change the uh, git over here. Let me hit control plus a couple times. I wanna change the git over here to be a root. And for the resources for our pixels, we want resources for a create action, update and an index action. Index is what we're gonna to use to get the pixels, and then these are gonna be the things where we either create or update them. Okay, so that takes care of that. Uh, the next question here is gonna be, um, let's come up to our app, our controllers, and our pixels controller. So a lot of this is gonna be pretty standard because a pixels controller just kinda of has some stuff you would expect. So for the index method here, we're gonna need a at pixels equals pixel dot all, and we're gonna render this in JSON so that whoever requests this uh, gets it back. Next, we want to handle the create action. So for the create action, we're gonna have some pixel params, which means we're gonna to need to define those down here at the bottom under a private method, something like this. Uh, and then we want to tab this over because it looks a little bit ugly like this. Okay, so that takes care of that. Uh, my formatter's totally broken, that's fine. We get to look at ugly code today. Uh, after we do the pixel, we can then do the pixel.userID equals current user. What we're gonna do for this is a before action. I'm gonna do a little bit of live refactoring to my notes here. A before action for the create and the update, just like that. And the reason why we're doing this is because now we don't have to do this user ID thing. What we can instead do is just say, uh, this can be dot uh, merge with the current user. And we'll do something similar for the update down below, something like this. Uh, but here we have a pixel.find for a params ID if the pixel uh, already exists for X, Y, and color. And in that case, we probably don't need to merge in the current user. So I guess we're good here. Let me go ahead and tab this over. So this should be fine, I think. Let's go over to our views, our pages, and our homepage. 
Okay, in our homepage, we have a couple things we need to take care of. First of all, let's change this header to just be Rails slash place because I think I'm funny. Then let's do a check to see if the user is signed in. If the user signed in, this is where we're gonna hook up our Pixels controller. So we'll go ahead and we'll do this and then we'll go ahead and close this div down here. Uh, we also want to have a logout button. We can put this wherever we would like. I'm just gonna put it in here inside of this Pixels controller. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be here. Uh, next, let's come down here to the else where we can say, if you're not already logged in, this will let you create an account. Okay, that takes care of that. Next step, we want a BR after this uh, logout button. After the logout button, we want to hook up our input to select a color. It's gonna look something like this, an ID of color, a type of text, a data-pixels-target of color. This is gonna let us do like a document document element by ID, but in a much easier way. We're then going to have a data-action where the on change when you click is going to be a pixels load color, or sorry, not when you click, uh, when this when this changes, it's going to call load color, which is going to change the preview for the pixels. And the current value is going to come from current user dot get last pixel color. So what does that mean? Well, up here in our models inside of our user dot rb, we want to create uh, two things actually. First, we want to say this has many pixels. After we say this has many pixels, we then want to create this helper method where we can say def get last pixel color. This formatter is going to drive me nuts today. Uh, what this pixel get last pixel color is going to do, it's going to return white if uh, this user has no pixels. Otherwise, it's going to return the last col uh, the color of the last pixel this user created. So we're going to be storing the color of the last pixel this user clicked with. Uh, so if they changed it to blue and refresh, it'll go back to whatever they previously had. But if they changed it to blue and actually placed a pixel, then it'll stay blue. To me, that makes the most sense for like usability. Okay, now we have to create our canvas, and this is where things are going to get a little bit, uh, a little bit tricky. Basically, with the canvas, we need to create a blank canvas that we can use inside of our stimulus controller. However, uh, we want this to be the preview canvas, and instead, we're going to have all of our actual stuff happen to a background canvas. So the preview canvas sits in front of it. That's the thing where if you hover over something, it draws like a red thing on top of it. And then behind that, we're going to have the canvas that has all of the existing colors. This way we can modify the preview canvas without having to redraw the background canvas every time. Uh, this just makes sense to me. I don't know. There's probably an easier way to do this, but this is what I went with. We give the background a data pixels target of background. We give the pixels target of canvas to the preview. We give it a data action saying on click place a pixel and on mouse move call the mouse move function. We also give both of these a position of absolute. That is it for the HTML portion here. Cool. Now what we want to do is let's come into our JavaScript, our controllers and our pixels controller. Inside of our pixels controller, we have to do a whole bunch of stuff. First things first, up here on top of everything else, let's declare a couple constants. One for the pixel size, one for the canvas width, one for the canvas height. Then we also need to uh, create a little helper function. This is gonna look a little bit scary, but bear with me. We need to extract coordinates from the canvas. We're gonna be doing this in a couple different places, so we wanna keep this and make sure it's reusable. You could also put this inside the stimulus controller. I'm not gonna tell you to live your life. Uh, basically, we just grab a rect from the get bounding rect. We then grab the X, which is a math floor here to convert the uh, the client, the, uh, the, the mouse location to a rectangle that is the size of the pixel size. We do this for the X and the Y. The math just works out. And then we return the X and the Y. And that's what allows us to actually get coordinates out of this because uh, we are resizing the pixels to be 10 pixels wide technically. So we have to do a bit of math whenever we hover over something to convert. Okay. Anyway, static targets. We have the background canvas where we actually draw stuff. We have the canvas, which is technically our preview canvas. And we have the color, which is the input color that's telling us what color the user wants to draw. Next, we have to get the context for both of our canvases. So we call you know background target and canvas target because that's what our target names are right here. Then we have to call a couple helper functions. The first one is to resize the canvas because I didn't feel like just, you know declaring this in HTML and then doing it again in JavaScript. Uh, we're just going to set the canvas size in here. So you can see up here, we're nowhere in here are we defining a canvas size. We come in here, we say, all right, this resize canvas needs to grab the canvas target and the background target. And for each of these, it needs to set the width and the height to those constants we defined up there earlier. So our code is a little bit cleaner. Once we've done that, let's come in here and let's load the pixels. What does load the pixels? 
Okay, my recording just messed up. Uh, let's go to load the pixels. For load the pixels, it's not that scary. Uh, it's gonna be just a quick little fetch to slash pixels, which is our index method. Up here, when we declared the resources for the index inside the pixels controller, it returns all of the pixels in a JSON array. So we fetch that, then for each of these, we say draw this pixel. What does draw this pixel look like? Well, that's another method we gotta create. Draw this pixel takes in an X, a Y, and a color and that's all inside of an object which is of course what's going to be returned from our pixels then we say fill style is equal to the color that you passed in and then create a rectangle that takes in the x and the y of this pixel draws it to the pixel size away to the right and the pixel size away to and like down uh, and then it multiplies the x and the y by the pixel size to get the actual coordinates pretty standard stuff if you've done anything grid based but uh, it can also be a little bit intimidating to look at Okay, let's come up here and let's hope that my recording can handle the load color uh, because this is the bulk of our logic here. We're gonna do this right below our resize canvas uh, and we'll just say right here, I'm kidding. Uh, it's just grabbing the color value from our input. See, that wasn't too scary. And now we're pretty much uh, we're pretty much cruising here. The last thing we have to do uh, is come over here and let's just refresh real quick so we can log in. Let me come in here and log in. I'll sign up with Dean at example.com, password of password. Now, oops, uh, now it's important to note here at this point, we there's a couple things we still haven't defined, but uh, I want you to at least get a good, get, get a good idea of what we're doing here. This is the color, this is the canvas, our mouse move isn't working. Why isn't the mouse move working? Well, we still haven't defined it. So let's go ahead and let's uh, define what the mouse move does. Uh, so that is gonna be a function down here. This is already being called inside of our home. Remember, we have this uh, on mouse move right here in our preview. So whenever we move our mouse, it's going to call this. It's going to extract the coordinates because, again, we have to convert our mouse space on the screen to coordinate space in the grid that is 10 pixels wide. After that's done, we have to draw the preview pixel. This one's going to be actually scary. I can't save you from all of the scary methods. Uh, for this one, we're drawing the preview pixel. It takes in an X, a Y, and a color. First things first, it grabs the preview context and it clears a rectangle at uh, the uh, canvas and the width and height. So it just clears the entire preview canvas. It then says, all right, set the preview alpha to 0.5. This is how opaque it is. So this is like half opacity. It sets the color to be whatever color we have set. And then it fills the rectangle again at that location. In retrospect, we probably could have extracted some of this logic. Uh, and then it finally sets the preview alpha to one, something like that. Now if we come over here and we refresh uh, and we change this to red, uh, you can see red is now being previewed here. If I hit enter in my terminal and click somewhere, you'll see we're running into issues because place pixel isn't defined yet. So let's go ahead and let's define place pixel. Again, this is the same thing as before. It's defined right here. Click is place pixel action in the uh, pixels controller. So let's go ahead and let's place a pixel. Placing a pixel again takes in the coordinates and then it sends pixel data. What does send pixel data do? Well, this one's probably the uglier method here, but uh, you know, you get what you paid for. It's a free tutorial. This is going to take an X, a Y, and a color just like before, create some pixel data. It then creates a request options, which is where we post to our create or update uh, actions. It takes in the application slash JSON, the XCSRF token, which we get from our uh, CSRF token in our uh, document. I've covered this before, but I guess I can cover it real quick because the timer is running, you know, not a real speed run, but whatever. Uh, we can come in here to our elements, our head, we can scroll down and we should have a CSRF token right here, meta name of CSRF token. I hope you can see that. That's what we're grabbing there. Okay, we come back over to the console, scroll down a bit and resize this. So we grab that CSRF token. We then pass in the body as that pixel data. We fetch to slash pixels with a post request. And then it says, all right, here's your response, draw this pixel. So let's come over here, let's refresh. If we change this to red and then click somewhere, Ta-da, you've seen that now be drawn. It's now saved in the database. If we refresh, it'll come back just like that. That's pretty cool. If I zoom out, canvas looks like it's filling up the whole screen. I can change this color to blue if I want to, and I can click here. Okay, that's part one, right? So let's go ahead and let's stop our server, do a git add dot, git commit dash M, finished uh, first part. And now let's do a Rails S again. So how do we make this real time? That's pretty simple, uh, at, which is surprising because this should normally be a lot harder, right? Well, first things first, we need to come into our uh, actual channels here and our pixels channel. In our pixels channel, we need to set up our stimulus controller. Now, setting up our stimulus controller can be pretty scary, uh, but trust me, this one's gonna be pretty simple here. 
first things first, we want to change this from some channel to pixels channel, and then we want to uncomment that. We're now done with the subscribed method. Next, we want to say if we receive data, actioncable.server.broadcast to the pixels channel, which is this channel right here, send the data. That's it for this. Next step, how do we how do we tell this this uh, application that we've created data? We're saying what to do when you receive it, but how do we send the data? Well, that's pretty simple. We come up to our models. In our models, we come into pixel.rb. In pixel.rb, we say after you create a pixel, after create commit, call actioncable.server.broadcast to the pixels channel and send myself. So this is where it gets the data from. It then broadcasts the data. So now the clients need to listen for the data. This is where, because I said the keyword clients, you should come into your JavaScript, your channels, and your pixels channel. This is your front end logic for your uh, your action cable. In here, the only thing we really need to do is uh, change the received data. So if we receive data on the client, we're gonna console log it so we can see it in the console. We're then going to create an event, which is a new custom event. We're gonna say pixel received. The detail will be the data. We then call document.dispatch event. This allows us to now come into our pixels controller, come up to our, uh, you know, our first, um, uh, connect method and in our connect method what we can do is we can say all right we we know what we need to listen for here so let's go ahead and add an event listener for pixel received event which we just defined then we say if we receive a pixel draw the pixel all right cool i'm going to come over here and open up a new tab go over to localhost port 3000 login sign up as john at doe.com i'm going to copy the email and paste it in as the username i'm going to change my color to i don't know purple enter and now I'm gonna scroll out a bit. So I'm gonna refresh both of my pages real quick just to make sure I'm gonna change this back to purple again because I don't make good choices. And now I'm gonna click somewhere and you can see purple appearing on Dean's uh, client. If Dean clicks somewhere with blue, he can now do that. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the timer because we now have a pretty good r slash place clone working in Rails. So yeah, like I said, the actual action cable portion here is really simple. This is one of those things where you can set this up really fast. Now, there's probably some edge cases and stuff, maybe some other features you would want. But uh, in terms of like what you can throw together really quick, this is pretty cool to have this level of of communication set up in like, you know, 30 seconds after you have the bulk of it set up. Right. But yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully you found this entertaining. Maybe you learned something and hopefully I will see you in the next video.